This is Twit. For the last couple of weeks on Smoke and Solder, we've been building the MFJ 941 EK HF antenna tuner kit. This week, we're going to do the final testing and calibration. So there's a few items we're going to need. A 100-watt radio with an adjustable RF output, an accurate watt meter, and they suggest a bird with a 100H slug. I don't have a bird. wish I did. But what I do have is the MFJ Deluxe True Peak Reading SWR watt meter, which we'll use this as our reference standard. A porcelain or plastic light socket with a pigtail attached, and a 40 watt incandescent appliance bulb. What I've got is a 40 watt clamp on light here with a reveal bulb in it, so we'll hope that'll work out. We need an insulated straight blade tuning tool to set the trim pots and trim cap in here, and I've got a little uh, tweaker here. And we're going to need some PL259 patch cables, three foot or shorter, and I've got those here. And we'll need a volt ohm meter, and I've got that as well. The first thing we should do is check for loose hardware and tighten any connections as needed, and inspect the turns on the coils here to make sure none of them are shorted, as well as the two capacitors here. I have already done all that, and everything looked good there. Uh, we confirm that both our meters are resting on zero and they are and we confirm that all the knob pointers are in the correct positions and they are and check to be sure that the push button switches do actually push on and off the first test here is the meter lamp test that's simple enough we take the supplied cable here hook it to 12 volts plug it into the power connector on the rear of the unit and be certain that the meter light does come on when we turn it on now the next test involves checking out the RF switching here in the bypass mode. I'll use the old Simpson 260 here for this test. We're going to put it on R times 1. First I'm going to connect to the transmit lead. That's that one right there. I could connect it in the back. I'm just going to use an alligator clip. And we want to check it to the dummy load. So I'll turn the switch all the way over to dummy load. I'll touch the meter here to the dummy load connector and we got continuity there and in none of the other positions. The next one we'll check is the balance line wire. So we'll put it on the terminal down here marked wire and we have continuity there when we flip it to that position. The next ones we'll check are coax 1 and coax 2. Coax 1, when we're in that position we've got continuity. We'll move on to coax 2 and we have continuity in the coax 2 position so our switching is working okay now we'll want to check the tuned side of the switch here what we'll do is connect to the stator here on the antenna capacitor the stator is this side right here the one that does not move and there on dummy load we have continuity and nowhere else so we'll check the balanced wire and we have continuity only in that position We'll check coax 1 and coax 2. There's coax 1. And coax 2 is good too. So all our switching is working right, both in the tuned and in the bypass modes there. We'll want to check our ballon here that's used for balance lines. Uh, that's simple enough to do. Uh, basically all we do is measure across the two terminals for the balance line. And we've got continuity there. Now we'll move on to the power meter calibration. We want to be sure that we do not turn the antenna selector switch or the inductor switch while power is applied to the tuner here because you could damage something. And that's a rule that should be observed anytime you're using this tuner. We'll need to connect this gear in the method shown here, the transmitter into the tuner from the tuner to our external watt meter and then on to the dummy load. So I'm going to connect the uh, meter here to coax one and I'll connect my transceiver here to the transmitter input. Now this meter requires power to work. That's because there's an active circuit in there for true peak reading. So I'll hook my 12 volts up to the meter here so that it's functional. Now we shouldn't place our hands near any of the components in here while we've got the transmitter energized because you could get a nasty little burn. And the first thing we'll do is set the forward power setup and bridge null. So we'll tune our radio to 14.200 and select the CW mode. And we'll set the antenna selector switch here on bypass to coax 1. 
We'll set our meter here to 300 watts and we should apply 100 watts power into the tuner now. Here's 100 watts being applied to the unit. We're showing 100 back here on our reference meter. We're way over that up here on the tuner meter. So what we need to do is turn down R8 here to bring that into range and set it at 100 watts. No matter how I turn R8 here, I cannot get it down to where it reads 100 watts. The next step says to watch the reflected power meter and address the trimmer capacitor back here for a null reading. And that's going to have some effect on the power readings too. And I would call that null right there. You notice that the power reading did come down. So now we'll set it for 100 watts. And we want to be careful when we're doing this that we don't leave our rig keyed up too long. They're not made for continuous duty like that. So kind of take it easy on the rig. So we've got the first setting done there and we've nulled out the capacitor as well. Now we need to reduce the power of the transmitter down to 20 watts. We'll change our range switch here to the 30 watt scale and it's pegged out as well. So we'll adjust R7 until we've got a 20 watt reading. And we're not able to get it down to 20 watts. Now I was looking at it wrong. We don't set it for 20 watts down here. When we've got the button in here, we're reading off the top scale. So 200 up here would actually be 20 watts right there. And now the reflected power calibration. I don't have any dummy loads that I know have certain amounts of reflected power to check this with. <laughs> Fortunately, MFJ has come up with a real clever way to do this. What we'll do is just reverse our cables. That's right. We'll connect the antenna to the transmit lead, and we'll connect the transmit to the coax one lead. So this time we go to the 300 watt position, which is in, and we apply 20 watts. I'm showing 20 watts there on my reference meter. And we'll adjust R6 to where we're showing 20 watts of reflected power here. That'll be the scale going this way. And that's 20 watts right there. Now we'll reduce the power to 5 watts. That's as low as I can go. And the reference meter back here is showing about 7 watts. So we'll match that. We've got to Come back out to the 30 watt position and adjust our 5 here to set this to 7 watts. So now our meter should be calibrated. Now we'll check out the T network. We've got our antenna and our meter and load hooked back up correctly. We'll set our range switch to 300, which is in. We'll turn our antenna selector here to the tune side to coax 1 so that our tuner is in circuit. We'll set our inductor switch to J. And we'll set both our capacitors, the transmitter and the antenna here to zero. And now we'll begin applying power very low and gradually increase it up to 100 watts. We can verify if this is working by adjusting either of these capacitors. We should see the reflected power go up. Actually, we're not seeing much change in the reflected power there on the reference meter. And that's because of where it's located in the circuit. Let's try the same thing with the antenna tuning capacitor now. And we've got the same result. Reflected power is changing. So we know that worked. Now let's change the inductor. We'll unkey the rig because we don't want to turn the inductor while the rig is keyed up. We can see when we rekey that we have a higher reflected power now. So that tells us that the T network is working. Now we have one final test here and that is the balance line check. And that's where we need our 40 watt incandescent bulb. To do this, the first thing we need to do is connect a jumper from the wire terminal up to the balance line terminal right above it. There's our jumper. And now we'll connect the light bulb across the two balance line terminals here. As we start applying power, we see the light bulb starting to light up. Let's try to uh, reduce the reflected power here. Now I'll turn off the power and we'll try the inductor in a different position. There we go. We can get it down to about zero. All tested and tuned up and ready to go. All we need to do now is put the cover on top. 
So there we have it. The MFJ 941EK Versa Tuner 2 Antenna Tuner Kit. It went together real easy and looks to be made out of decent components. So I would say for the price, you can't go wrong with this. And that was a lot of fun. I had forgotten about um, using the light bulb there on the balance line connections to actually do some adjusting with there. But uh, you can see it works. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's hard to know what the impedance of a light bulb would be because it is going to change as uh, the wattage increases and the filaments get hotter in there. But, hey, that's, uh, that's what they say to do it. So that's what we did, and it worked out great.